Hello guys, so what I'm going to do in this video is um, demonstrate this, which is the Awiglatter 2 inch laser collimation device. It's really, really, really is very, very nice. Um, I'm going to move into close up mode so you can see it in more, see it in more detail. In this little video I'm, I'm going to make, I'm going to talk about the Awiglatter laser collimator devices, uh, which is in this box here. And I'm also going to talk about this thing here, which is uh, which is a holographic attachment that this this uh, this collimator can use. So if I take it out of the box, this plastic box that this device uh, comes in, it, here we can see it. Now there's several vari variations of this particular type of uh, of um, of collimation device from from Howie Glatter. Uh, there's a 650 nanometer red standard brightness one. There's a 635 nanometer red high brightness one, which is actually what this one is. And there's also a 532 nanometer extra bright one. Um, and that order I just gave them in there, with the standard the high brightness and extra brightness, extra uh, high brightness, um, is, is reflected in the price. So this middle one is um, the, the middle price one. The uh, standard brightness is the uh, cheapest one. Uh, and of course, the, high, the extra high brightness is, and the green one is the most expensive one. Um, this is a two-inch version, and now he does them in several different types. Um, he does them in um, in in a, a 1.25 only version. He does them in a two-inch version, which this one is, and he also does a hybrid model, which is um, a 1.25 stroke two-inch version. One two. Um, it depends what sort of focuses you've got on your scope. Uh, me personally, I've just got the two-inch focuses on all of my scopes, so I've bought the two-inch one. And uh, to say I'm uh, not impressed with it or is, is an understatement. It's absolutely superb piece of kit. It really is. The quality and the machining of it. I'm, I'm sure you can see it there, but it's 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 a thing of beauty. It really is. It's really heavy and chunky as well. Um, it's machined in, I think, I'm not, I think it's stainless steel, um, I don't think it's aluminium, I think it's stainless steel. It's really wonderfully made, it's, it's a thing of beauty, it really, really is. Um, as I say, this is a two inch one, I'll give you some idea of the size of it, look, there's my, there's my iPhone 4S, um, gives you some feel for, for how big it is. Um, is the on off button here you press the on off button and there you can see it on my table and i can i can focus it into in in um in the camera there and you you get a you get a feel for for it yeah um what Aoi provides is this uh point thing at the end here which screws on and off and you can get various attachments for this end, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later on, and that alone is a is a is a fantastically sharp laser. That alone, but what Aoi also supplies is this here, which focuses that even further to be an incredibly tight pencil beam of light. Now I've tested this in my collimation jig, where I can turn it around like that, and I've seen that spot of light at a distance of around about 30 feet and it doesn't move even a millimetre. It's so accurate. And apparently what Howie does when he, ma when he makes these is he, he collimates them, gets them right, and he throws them against a polyurethane wall uh, to try to test the, the, the internal mechanisms that keep, keeps that pencil beam fine and collimated. Um, he tests it and uh, to test how robust it is, he throws it against a wall. And only if they pass that test does he put them into his uh, into the into pots that, that he's going to sell. So it, the the other thing about Aoi is he's an incredibly uh, talented and is a really really nice guy as well. Um, very uh, approachable. He's he's very helpful over email if you've got questions or problems. He, he's a really nice guy to to deal with. Very passionate. One of those one of those individuals that's very passionate about a subject. So. I'm again extremely impressed with this. It's, it really is very nice. The, so the, there's the on-off button I mentioned earlier on. Now, one, one, if I was to express a concern about this, um, how how long term it will be, I don't know. That button at the top, can you see that? It just, it just, and if I, it just rattles a little bit. 
and uh, it will remain to be seen how robust that turns out to be over a period of time. It may be nothing, I think it's captive in there and you press it down and it certainly seems to work so it's probably nothing, um, nothing to worry about but I don't know, it just gives me a little bit of concern on, on something that's as expensive as this is which in the UK is about £150 um, uh, and I think the current exchange rates, euros and dollars, that would equate to be about $180 thereabouts. Um, so I, I, honestly, I'm so I'm so impressed with this. It's a really lovely device, very accurate, and you know I you, I'm, I'm sure if you're familiar with um, with laser collimators or cheaper laser collimators, they, personally I've just had nothing but trouble with them. I really haven't. Um, I always find that either a when you get them they are not accurately calib calibrated, or they lose their calibration again very very quickly. Or maybe not very quickly, but certainly every period of weeks when they're rattling around or whatever, they lose their collimation themselves. Now, when you're collimating a scope, you need this to be accurate. It must be accurate. Your collimation device must be accurate. Otherwise, you're collimating your scope against an incorrect frame of reference. So, personally, I've always been in the situation when I've been collimating my scopes with cheaper devices, I'm always of the opinion of, is, my, is this right? Is it wrong? Uh, I don't want to... I really don't want to be there and I'm happy to spend more money to get something like this to get my scopes right so that I can enjoy my scopes under the night sky knowing that I've got them tuned to the very best of their capability. I'm prepared to pay a little bit of extra money to get, to have that and that's why Aoi Glatter I think is why he's as successful as he is because most people I think are prepared to pay as well. So it's a very nice device. Now. What I also wanted to show you is this other attachment that we've got, this holographic attachment. Okay, now this is really interesting and it offers us some very interesting possibilities. So if I take that focusing attachment off, and remember, recall what I said, that comes as standard with the with the um, with the collimator when you buy it. This is extra, this costs an extra £30 in the UK or an extra, um, I think that would be about $40 or 40 euros or thereabouts. If you put that in the end here, just let's just screw that in. Come on. Here we go. Screw that in. Now then, look what happens. We've got a holographic beam or which has got concentric circles. Now, I'm only a foot or, foot or, I'm only holding this around about a foot or 25 centimeters or 40 centimeters above the table. When that's in your scope, that pattern here is around about 10, 8 or 10 inches across, or sort of like 200 to 200 millimeters across. And that offers some very interesting possibilities for collimation of certain types of scope. Not necessarily Newtonian reflectors, but especially Ritchie Chrétien or RC types of telescope. Now I've got one of those. I've got um, the in the UK it's called the Altair Astro um, eight-inch version of that. I think in the United States and some other countries it's called the GSO, or it's made by uh, uh, Guanshen Optical GSO out of China, and they're rebadged to be uh, various um, very under various makes. It's, it's essentially the same type of scope. The thing is with Richie Chrétien scopes, they can be quite tricky to collimate because um, you've got two hyperbolic surfaces and you're trying to get those perfectly set up. And I've struggled a little bit using things like a Cheshire um, collimator on those. I, 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 I'm, I, it's very, very fiddly. And I think the RC type of design of scope is universally recognized as such. Now I've been in correspondence with a guy um, out of the Netherlands, a guy called Jay Jongmans outside the, uh, in the Netherlands. And, and I'm gonna make a video on showing how to collimate an RC scope with this device. But using these rings, he has come up with a very interesting possibility or mechanism to calibrate and collimate an RC type of telescope, which I'm going to share, as I say, on another video. It should be very, it should be quite interesting, because by checking the concentricness of these circles when it's reflected around the different mirrors, it makes a, a target which is much easier to tweak using the collimation bolts on the scope as opposed to looking at that tiny thing down the Cheshire. So it offers interesting possibilities. But back to, the, back to this device itself, again, very impressive. 
very nice device indeed. As you can see, it's really quite chunky. <clears throat> I've got big hands. You saw it with my iPhone earlier on. It must weigh probably probably half a kilogram, something like that. It's very very nice. And in my next video, I'm going to show this in action. I'm going to show you um, uh, it projected against a wall about 25 feet away, and I'll show you that it doesn't move at all when this is rotated around that that spot to prove that you know this is really a high quality, high precision device. So. I think that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you find it helpful. Again, I think you probably can tell that I'm very impressed with it. Again, the only thing that just slightly, slightly, slightly takes the edge off is that button. Again, it could be nothing. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's nothing, and, that, and it will be fine. But yeah, just, just, just that, and uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. I hope you find that video informative and useful. And um, I'll see you next time on the next one. Take care, bye-bye.